Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful morning or day, whatever time it is where you are or when you're watching this. Today, I thought we'd talk about the 23rd Psalm. The 23rd Psalm is a beautiful psalm. It helps us in a lot of ways that I don't think everyone realizes until they really deep study it. And so that's what I thought I'd start with. I'm going to read the 23rd Psalms for us together to start it off. And in my Bible, it has little titles for some of the chapters. This one says, The Divine Shepherd. And that's what Jesus is, the Divine Shepherd. And we are his sheep. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for my name. I messed up. For his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. They brought thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. Thou preparest a table in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Right there, it just is so wonderful already. And then when we study it deeper, it gets even better. This is uh, the passage for the post I put on Instagram. Like this. I do this backwards. There we go. And when I teach this class, we always come, the kid, when the children come in, they, I try to get them a paper. Uh, for this one, I made a word search. It has the letters of Lord spelled out in it, just the shapes. And then inside the shapes, I've got the words of the 23rd Psalm, the first three verses. And, uh, and I put the papers down in front of them, and they're upside down. And as they come in, they find their you know, spot and around friends, and they're giggling, and they're laughing, and everything. And then I say, okay, don't turn your papers over yet. Pick one marker. One marker you can see through when you put it on the paper. And then when I say go, we'll have a race. And they race to see who can find all the words in the passage first. They really like that. And I like making it for them. I also, when I teach the 23rd Psalms, I use a coloring book. I get them at the Dollar Tree. This one and several others. And what I do is, for their journals, I pick a page. And I thought this was a good page to pick for them because it has a shepherd and a sheep and I write out the 23rd Psalm and then this way they have in their journal a picture they can make you know color or with their markers and I tell them this lamb is you you make it you so there's all different color lambs. Some of them get bows on their heads with the kids. Some of them get all kinds of stuff. Their fur is different color. One of them got eyeshadow. But it makes them realize on a personal level. Because remember in the first video, I said on a personal level is what we need to be doing. So this is them. This is Jesus. And he's taking care of us. 
And then throughout the lesson, I talk about what a good shepherd does for us. I explain to them after I've studied, and this is my study on the good shepherd. I got it on both pages. Um, what it actually means. I look up definitions of words. I decided for this passage in Psalms, I wanted to know what a shepherd actually does in reality. I mean, I had in my head what it does, but in reality, at a personal level, between the Good Shepherd and me, what is he doing for me? What is he doing with me? How is he, you know? So that's the kind of things that I think we need to know when we're studying. So I'll put that back there. And the last coloring page I made for at the end of the lesson was this. And it's Jesus, oops, sorry, Jesus and a person. And it's got a headscarf on, like a biblical times. And I told them, now, you are that lamb in the first picture. In reality, we're not lambs. We're people. And it doesn't matter that we're not actually lambs. It, what it matters is how we and Jesus grow in our relationship. He's ready and waiting for us. He wants to have that relationship with us. He wants to care for us. So when I give them this, I read them this verse, and it's Isaiah 40, 11. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. And he does. He provides us with all the food we need. But it's not just physical food. It's spiritual food. I need my spiritual food every morning to get me going. That's why I do my journals. I want to have that physical food and spiritual food so I can be strong. He shall gather the lambs with his arm. That's why I enjoyed that one picture so much. Because in that first picture, as I point out to them, in that first picture, he's got us in his arm. He's our good shepherd. And carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are young. And I thought that is a perfect verse to go along with the children so they can kind of visualize how well God takes care of us. When I study, I make a, a lot of things up and I try to find resources. I found this book. This is the inspiration for the pictures that I have in, on my, uh, in my journal. And it's called, oh, there we go, Little Lamb and the Good Shepherd by Harrison House. And Let's see if I can get, there we go. And there is the writer and the illustrator. If you don't have this book, if you've never read it, this is a wonderful, wonderful book. I read it to the children's, children's, children every time I do the 23rd Psalm because it illustrates in such a beautiful way how much Jesus loves us, how much he cares for us, and how much he is taking care of us. And I don't think, uh, especially some of the younger children, understand how great of a caregiver he is to us. So that when I read the lesson, I like to emphasize a couple pictures. This one here looked like the coloring picture to me. And to me, 
That's a great illustration of how well he takes care of us, his sheep. Some of the other pictures in here that I, or I used for mine, um, I'll just show you it so that probably will. are, of course, the little lamb that's on the front. And I tell them, draw yourself as a little lamb. Make that little lamb you. And this one here I used from the book. Jesus comes to us, open his arms up wide, and says, come unto me. To me, that makes my heart so happy that he cares so much my little prayer here on this page is thank you lord that you are my shepherd that you provide for me and i don't have to fear that you're merciful and forgiving and i have you in my life to me having jesus in my life is such a blessing I don't think I'd make it if I didn't have him. And when we do our studies and we do our journaling, dive deep into the words. Look them up in a, in a Bible dictionary that you can trust that will show you the truth. Look them up and define them. I've got let's see, a page and a half of what a shepherd is. And it also t refers us to, uh, tells us to go to John 10, 1 through 21. And it's Jesus speaking to us and telling us things that we really need to know. So I encourage you, read the Psalms. Look up the book. Find out if you can get it. I don't know. I would read it online if I thought it was okay with the author, <laughs> but I don't know, and I don't want to do something that would go against what she wants, but I do want to promote her book because I don't get anything out of it except for the knowledge that someone else is going to enjoy it as much as me. And then I also look up all the places in the Bible where the word shepherd is, so I can read it. It's in the Bible 74 times. I didn't realize. If it's in the Bible 74 times, don't you think it's rather important? 57 in the old, 17 in the new. Let's see. I also put in here 1 Peter 2, 25. For ye were my sheep, ye were a sheep going astray. And that's all of us before we're saved. But, mm, I'm sorry, I'm stumbling <laughs> I just don't seem to be able to do this without the stumbling. But are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of our souls. So I looked up bishop, and he's an overseer. And he oversees people. So, Jesus, our shepherd, is our overseer, our bishop. And he's the head of the church. Then the pastor's our neck of the church. And all the rest of us are the body, those who are saved. So I thought that also was a good illustration to be putting forth for the children. And it kind of goes on to, my, my study goes on to thinking about if he's my good shepherd and he's taken such great care of me, what am I doing? Who am I hanging out with? Am I telling others about him? I would be ashamed of myself if I hadn't. 
and at times I haven't, so I have to think about this. I have to let people know how good he is to us. I belong in his flock because I'm saved. Therefore, I don't want to be ashamed in front of my good shepherd. So I go there with the children too. He cares for us, provides for us, defends us. What are we doing? So that's where this post came from. I hope you enjoyed this time of study. And I really strongly encourage you not only to read the 23rd Psalms in the Bible, but to get this book. And I hope that you will share with me in the comments what you got out of the 23rd of Psalms when you read it. How did it make you feel? Share your Bible journaling page if you want to, because I know journaling pages can be very personal. I have several, I mean, I've been doing this for years, so several that I would never share with anyone. Because it's just personal, me and God. But if you want to, I would love to see them and enjoy them with you. And I'd say a lot of others would too. I'm so glad we got this time together. And I hope through these little videos that we can enjoy this time with the Lord. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to hear from you guys. Bye-bye.